Off a day, the Committee on Health, Land, Justice, and Culture is now called to order. Today is Thursday, 13, 2021, and the time is 2 p.m. If everybody could please put their, um, their Zoom on mute, thank you. All right. Notices for this virtual public hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on Thursday, May 6, and again on Tuesday, May 11, 2021. And the notice was also published in the Guam Daily Post on the same day. The Zoom meeting is hosted by the legislature's AV staff and my committee staff, and I thank them for their assistance. The host will mute all Zoom participants until called upon by the chair. Individuals testifying shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking and begin by stating their name for record keeping purposes. The first item and only item on our agenda today is bill number 131-36 LS. It is introduced by Senator Jose Pedro Terlahi, Senator Mary Camacho Torres, and Senator Tina Rose Munya Barnes. It's an act to transfer lot number 10126-1 consisting of 11,929 plus or minus square meters in the municipality of Derido to the Guam Regional Transit Authority, GRTA, for the purpose of developing and constructing a park and ride facility. I'd like to acknowledge at the presence today of my colleagues, beginning with Senator Jose Pedro Terlahi, Senator Mary Torres, Senator Anthony Ada, Senator Tello Taitegui, Thank you, senators, for being here today. We're also joined in our hearing today by um, Mayor Melissa Savares from Derido, Zitos Masi Mayor, for joining us. Mayor Anthony Chargilov of Inalahan. Thank you, Mayor, for joining us. And also some municipal planning council members and uh, director of Department of Land Management, Mr. Joe Borja, and the director of Guam Regional Transit Authority, Mr. Celestin Babauta. Thank you both for being here. And everyone else who has come to testify. So before we hear from those who are here to testify, I would like to ask the sponsor, Senator Pito Terlahi, to please introduce the bill. First off, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and Madam Speaker, and good afternoon to all my colleagues and all of you in attendance. Bill number 131-36 LS was introduced at the, the request of the, the author and is designed to give jurisdiction of 11,928 plus square meter property in Harmon to the Guam Regional Transit Authority for the purpose of constructing a park and ride facility. The Federal Transit Authority has awarded GRTA with a with $9.2 million federal grant to construct this building. And GRT has been making strides towards improving our island mass transit system. This is another bridge that needs to be crossed to deliver our residents a world-class transit system and reduce our residents' reliance on expensive fuel and driving to work on a daily basis and increasing the wear and tear of our roads. And let me just say that, um, you know, the Department of Land, Land Management, and I wanna thank the director, Joe, uh, the director of Land Management for, uh, for helping us out in, in uh, getting the partial uh, piece of property over in Derido. And uh, also I wanna thank uh, the mayor of Derido and Alejo Sablan for being with us. And also with um, the manager of Mass Transit Authority and uh, we're gonna go through with this and hopefully we can uh, resolve everything, whatever issues that we have. And I, I wanna thank Mary Torres, my, uh, my vice chair for this. And thank you very much, Mary, for, for sharing your thoughts and making sure that we go through with this, uh, with this project. Thank you, Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Terlangi. Um we will now call on those who have signed up to testify. So we have the board chair of the uh, Guam Regional Transit Authority, Mr. Alejo Sablan. 
And we also have the executive manager of the Guam Regional Transit Authority, Mr. Celestin Babauta. So I would invite the board chair um, to begin, if he is willing. And okay. Can you hear me, uh, speaker? Yes, I can. Madam speaker? Okay. Are you, are you able to turn on your video? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Let me turn that on. There you go. Madam Speaker? Yes, please, please do, yes. Okay. Good day, Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators. My name is Alejo Sablon, Chairman of the Guam Regional Transit Authority's Board of Directors. On behalf of my fellow board members, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for allowing me to testify in support of Bill 131-36. The legislation will transfer the property to GRTA to build a park and ride facility. First, in the island of Guam, the park and ride facility will certainly contribute to a healthy environment for the residents of the villages and military bases. Furthermore, Bill 131-36 is vital in affording the people of Jigo, Dedido, Anderson Air Force Base, and the Camp Ben Blas Marine Base that is soon to be open with their transportation needs. In March 2020, GRTA submitted a grant application for a competitive grant dubbed Bus and Bus Facilities Grant Program under the Federal Transit Administration. The hard work that the GRTA staff dedicated in formulating the grant application paid tremendous dividends. Of the 282 applicants, 96 received awards. GRTA received notification in August 2020 that it is one of the 96 and thus received 9.5 million. Without doubt, the award was a huge success. It will allow GRTA to purchase buses that are sorely needed to transport residents of the two most populated villages in Guam. The funds will be used to build a park and ride facility, purchase eight electric buses, eight electric cars, technology transportation management system, TMS, and construct charging stations. The proposed park and ride facility is the first in the island of Guam and it will be a tremendous value in providing for a healthy environment. Residents will be able to park their vehicles at the facility, get on a bus and drop off at their destinations. By parking their cars there, the villagers and base personnel are helping reduce road congestion, pollution, save monies for gas and maintenance of their vehicles and boost economic growth for Guam. Without doubt, using the funds to procure buses and cars will assist in providing reliable and safe transportation. The title of the grant application is The Road to Education. The first bus route will go from Dedidu to GCC, GWHS, UOG, and FDMS. That's Guam Community College, George Washington High School, University of Guam, and Father Duenas Memorial School. Therefore, students, faculty, staff, and workers from Jigo, Dedido, Anderson Air Force Base, and Ben Blas Marine Base can count on getting to school or work and quality of life destinations on time, all of the time. Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators, I have stated key points relative to my testimony. The diligence of Team GRTA in putting together its grant application paid enormous dividends with a grant award of 9.5 million. Moreover, our future leaders of Guam will be able to fulfill their education dreams with a reliable and safe transportation. They will undoubtedly shape our island into a sustainable and healthy place to live. In closing, I would like again once, thank, once again thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to test Testify in support of Bill 131-36, that's 36. Additionally, I am humbly asking all of the senators of the 36th Guam legislature
to vote in favor of the bill. Sincerementi Alejo Soblan, Chairman, Guam Regional Transportation Agency Board of Directors. Sizus Masi. Sizus Masi, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chairman, I, I just wanted, Aleo, Mr. Sablan, is that 9.5 million or 9.2 million? Because you're talking about 300,000 more. I thought it's 9.2 million. Uh, I I believe it, my uh, understanding is it, it is 9.5, maybe. Uh, 9.5. Mr. Nine? That's correct, uh, Mr. Babata, that's correct. 9.5? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, hear from Mr. Babalta now, uh, the okay. city manager, GRTA, Mr. Babalta. Okay. Half a day, Madam Speaker and honorable Senators. My name is Celestine Cruz Babalta, Executive Manager of the Guam Regional Transit Authority. I appear before this August body of government with sincere respect and gratitude for affording me the opportunity to testify in support of Bill 131-36. The intent of the bill was to transfer government of Guam property to the Guam Regional Transit Authority. A little over two years ago, Governor Luyong Guerrero appointed me to lead and manage the Guam Regional Transit Authority. I am thankful to the governor and lieutenant governor for their, for their confidence in me. Moreover, I want to thank GRTA Board Chairman Alevo Saban, Vice Chairman David Aranz, Director Mayor Kevin Sitriku, Director Bernadette Weeman, and Director Mayor Tony Chargola for their wholehearted support of GRTA and the Park and Ride Facility Project. I would be remiss if I do not recognize Senator Peter Terlahi and Senator Mary Torres, Chairman and Vice Chairman, respectively, of the Committee of Public Transit for their untiring support of GRTA. Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators, G GRTA is over 10 years old. However, when I reported to work, GRTA was faced with tremendous challenges. Seven out of 23 buses were operational. $1.2 million awarded to GRTA in 2011 remained unspent at that time and to be returned back to the Federal Transit Administration. For your information, we are going to be using that $1.2 million because we were able to convince the Federal Transit Administration to extend the uh, life of the, the, the uh, grant. One million in FDA funds to buy buses were programmed, but no action done. GRTA was paying a transit contractor $52 an hour for paratransit and $51 an hour for fixed route, 16 hours a day, six days a week. GRTA was providing the buses, vans paying for gas, maintenance, tires, oil, and other fuel at the same time. GRTA was leasing contractor vehicles at $74 an hour, 16 hours a day, six days a week, whenever GRTA showed the vehicles for fixed routes and paratransit services. There were no plans to design or build this facility. Riders are not being picked up on time or not picked up at all. Madam Speaker and Senators, here we are two years later with the following achievements. GRTA was awarded two competitive grants $9.5 million and $1.9 million with 20% matching. The grant applications were very challenging because my team and I have never done competitive grant applications in the past. Designing a GRTA facility, although progress is low because the property is uh, to build the facility remain cluttered with surveyed vehicles and metallic items. It's 30% design complete. 18 buses and vans are operational now. We're no longer leasing contractor vehicles. We bought 13 buses and tend to be delivered June, July timeframe. Three have already been delivered. We've activated the one call, one click technology transportation management system. The technology is helping us lead and manage transit operations daily. We're, we have plans to build a park and ride facility. We're purchasing electric buses and cars. We're pursuing a feasibility study with the University of Guam, an Uber route match to determine if mobility on demand transit operations is viable in Guam. We've saved government of Guam over $150,000 for taking over paratransit services. GRTA is no longer denying persons with disabilities rights and are being picked up on time. 
Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators, nonetheless, more must be done to make sure that GRTA provides a reliable and safe transit system for the people of Guam. For this reason, we're kindly requesting the support of the 36th Guam Legislature to pass Bill 131-36 so that we can build a park and ride facility in the village of Dededo. Funding for the facility will come out of the $9.5 million that GRTA was awarded competitively. In addition to the facility, we will be, we will be purchasing electric cars, electric buses, we're constructing charging stations, we're procuring technology transportation management system, plus there will be a design and to build a park and ride information center so the riders will have bathrooms, vending machines, et cetera. Furthermore, GRTA has developed a plan for the first bus route departing the facility. Because the title of the grant application is Road to Education, the initial bus route will be from Dededu to Guam Community College, George Washington High School, University of Guam, Father Duenas Memorial High School. The students, faculty, school staff, workers, persons with disabilities will therefore have dependable and environmentally clean transportation to and from the learning institutions. The buses will be running at least every 30 minutes so that the riders will be able to arrive at their destinations on time. Madam Speaker and Senators, with the park and ride and electric bus vehicles, GRTA is unquestionably re re contributing to the people of Guam sustainable and environmentally friendly vehicles. Other dividends that will be garnered from this project are as follows. Healthy environment, reduction in traffic congestion, residents won't have to buy high priced gasoline, reduce their maintenance cost, workers, students who have reliable transportation to work and school, definitely reduce road repairs, help grow Guam's economy and improve the quality of life of Guamanians and visitors. Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators, Team GRTA is continuing to work hard to provide the people of Guam with the transit system that they can count on to get them to their destinations on time, all of the time. Bill 131-36 is crucial in improving the island's transit system. The benefits of the park and ride facility are huge. Therefore, I am humbly seeking the support of the 36th Guam Legislature to vote in favor of Bill 131-36. Respectfully, Sal Bedalta, Executive Manager, GRTA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Babalta. We'll now hear from the Director of the Department of Land Management, Mr. Joe Borja. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Speaker. Uh, and in addition to all of that, that uh, Executive Manager about to mention, I don't know if he mentioned that in addition to all that, GRTA received land behind Tumon GTA for their maintenance facility, and that's just a uh, recent in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, secondly, uh, just a slight correction to uh, Senator uh, Peter Pelahi. Uh, Land management did not give the land to, uh, to GRTA. Only the legislature can give the land to, uh, to GRTA. Uh, land management merely identified a very, very uh, positive uh, location for that. And uh, with having said that, uh, the Department of Land Management uh, fully supports the intent of the bill to uh, transfer this property to the uh, GRTA. Uh, for those of you that may not be uh, familiar with the site, if I could have, uh, if I could be allowed to uh, to share screen. Okay, if everybody can see that, that is the actual uh, survey map of the property, and it's actually. Uh, across the street from an access easement from Harmon Loop Elementary School. And if you can see the property there, it's a long, narrow uh, a piece of property. And uh, normally lots are not created like this because uh, survey protocols actually limits uh, the shape of lots to a one to three ratio. 
That means that it should not be longer three times than it is wide one time. This lot is about 120 feet wide and about 1,100 feet long. And it was actually a remainder portion when uh, Harmon Elementary School uh, opted to provide an easement through that property. Now that easement that you see, that long line that you see uh, coming down there, the reason why the road was put there, the easement was put there, is because the pavement was there. It was paved. And the reason why the pavement was there is there was an old bull cart trail that used to run from uh, the Harmon uh, uh, Loop there to uh, to the backside. And on the map, you can see on the map that uh, Okay, I moved the map a little bit because the reason why the uh, that lot was severed if you can look on the top right hand corner under notes, it says the main purpose of the severance of the right of way is to serve the back portion of the Harmon Loop Elementary School for future development and other purposes. So this actual uh, a 40 feet easement actually uh, uh, connects Harmon Loop School, uh, 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 Loop through a uh, road in the back there that eventually comes out again at uh, Route 16. And let me uh, put up another aerial photograph that would look at uh, better, show it better. And I hope you can see that screen. That blue lot, that blue line, the blue polygon, the blue rectangle, that is the lot that uh, GRTA is looking at, and it's 10126-1. And uh, that aerial photograph, satellite photograph, we have superimposed, overlaid the uh, lot lines on it so you can see, uh, you know, some references. Uh, on the very top of the picture there, towards the right, you see there's uh, uh, yellow and white uh, uh, long rectangular things. Those are school buses. And that's where the uh, Department of Public Works uh, keeps their buses. And then right next to it is the uh, GPA facility and then you can see the uh, gym, and then you can see the baseball field from the, uh, on that recreational area. Uh, when I first saw this map and I first saw this lot, I actually thought that it was cut out for the uh, bus satellite station because uh, for safety purposes, uh, buses and cars, if you can, it's always better to spread them out like this in this uh, in that fashion, a long lot, rather than in a square lot where everything's really congested. Uh, so if everybody in that bus satellite station, the DPW bus satellite station, if everybody, if there was a fire in one of the buses, you'd have trouble uh, saving the other buses because they're all bunched together. Secondly, if they were all to try and get out of that one exit, one way in, one way out, you'd have a, a log jam. Uh, this lot, it being long like that, and with two exits and two uh, uh, access uh, points to it is a lot better uh, shaped lot, uh, you know, for the purposes of uh, parking and uh, even parking buses and like that. So, uh, you know, it, it's really got a bunch of uh, very, very positive uh, element attributes to it that make it a very good lot for uh, what uh, GRTA intends to use it for. This lot was part of the basic lot of Harmon elementary school. So the question is who owns the property? Um, the basic lot was under the jurisdiction of the uh, the school, but when they divided, when they put that access road in and they left that other side, and then uh, Harmon Elementary School actually fenced in what their area is. So uh, that's the story of where this long part so, uh, came from. And thank you, and I'll be able to uh, hopefully answer any questions that the uh, the people may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Borja. So is it clear then that the land is under the jurisdiction of the government of Guam and not in any way related to the school? I mean, to, uh, to Yes, it is. There's a land registration case for that. 
Thank okay. you. Oh, okay, great. All right. Um, I'd like to recognize the presence of Senator Joanne Brown, who's joined us. Thank you, Senator. And we will now hear from the mayor of Dedido, Mayor Melissa Savaris. Thank you, um, Speaker. Okay. Um, well, just one second. Like to... uh, Mr. Borja, can you, uh, uh, or can we stop sharing screen right now for temporary? Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, you know, I thank Mr. Babata and, um, and Mr. Borja and Mr. Sablan for sharing their um, testimony. I'm here with, uh, my name is Melissa Savarez, Mayor of Derido. And I was reviewing the uh, bill number 131-36 uh, LS and the property, you know, I, I've known the property to be with uh, GDOE and I'm sharing with my municipal planning council member, uh, Mr. Uh, St. Nicholas about the, the roadway and how it's very close to uh, JM Guerrero Elementary, previously known as Harmon Loop Road. And Mr. Uh, Borja actually brought up a good point and something that is our concern as well. And th this bull cart trail is a paved road. It's uh, known as Metgood Street. And he brought up a point that the people short going from, from Route 16 to Harmon Loop Road to try to get away from that congested intersection at 16 and uh, 28, use this bull cart trail. They come from Hegel Loop and VSA Beneventi to shortcut into Metgood or even to the pipeline area uh, to, to stay away from the traffic area. So this is a very long um, uh, property. As he mentioned, it's, uh, it's a lot of residents also traverse it to get even to the sports complex, you know, as you know, we have the tennis courts that are now in place at the sports complex. Um, so of course you have high volume of traffic, hopefully uh, with anything that's built there, it, you know, we, we will reduce the number of cars and they'll be going to get their vehicles and coming in buses if that should happen. So. Uh, you know, my concern is that it is a very heavy traffic traveled area and as well as uh, not just by vehicles, but also by foot. Uh, the students, there's a bus stop uh, facing routes, uh, Harmon Loop Road um, at the end of the pavement uh, facing Kenny's. And so children who are riding the bus to high school to catch the bus to go to high school or even middle school walk this area from VSA Beneventi, Hegel, and Metgood to go to the bus stop. So it's also a heavy, uh, highly trafficked area for foot traffic. Uh, students going to JM Guerrero uh, from the housing areas with, uh, in the back also uh, use this uh, roadway. So um, I don't know if we're going to have to look at uh, putting a sidewalk on the other side so that the foot traffic is on one side of the property, uh, of, of the roadway, and uh, foot traffic will be separated from those that uh, vehicle traffic. Um, you know, I just wanna congratulate Mr. Babata for the additional funding that he was able to, um, to receive from the Federal Transportation Authority, because as you know, federal funding to Guam is key uh, for us to move forward with many of our projects. Um, and so, you know, I am concerned about the, the property being developed for park and ride. I would like to see where the fence for entrance and exits would be, um, as well as where the ticket office, and uh, especially for um, where the, uh, the buses will enter if, if this is the property of choice uh, for the mass transit. I just want to clarify with Mr. Borja. Mr. Borja, did you say that DOE transferred this property out of their inventory as well? Yes, Mr. Borja, if you could answer that question for us. 
Now, this is the remainder portion from the basic lot that the Department of uh, Education had jurisdiction over. And when the, uh, when the uh, road, when the Bukhart Trail, the easement was severed, this is the leftover portion from that basic lot. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, another question that I had, maybe Ms. for Mr. Borja, if you can answer, were there other properties, uh, other government properties um, uh, uh, identified for a park and ride other than uh, this? I mean, I know that's, that's not in the inventory of any other agency. We looked at several. We looked at several sites. This was not the only site that we looked at. We looked at some sites up in uh, in uh, Gigo, as well as uh, uh, indicating the uh, buffer strip. You know, so there were, uh, I, I believe, about four or five lot uh, areas that uh, we had spoken to with uh, uh, manager about that with GRTA. Another one that we were um, we were looking at maybe what about the old transfer station off Batulu because it could also face into uh, both Batulu Road and um, uh, Marine yeah. Corps Drive. We we looked at that, but uh, EPA is working with federal EPA Guam EPA for federal EPA to build Guam EPA headquarters over there the uh, old solid waste transfer station on the corner of Batula Road and Route 1. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Speaker. And thank you, Mr. Borja. Thank you very much, Mayor. Would uh, Mr. Sinicholas like to testify as well? Yes, I do. All right. Please. First of, first of all, my name is Joseph C. Sinicholas. I'm retired from the Guam Fire Department. I live at that Medford Street area. I have seen traffic uh, every day that goes through there. Uh, second of all, I don't think that the, the, that road also is wide enough for uh, the uh, buses to go in and out. Second of all, there's always problems with the uh, school buses making U-turns within that uh, traffic light in front of the elementary school. And third of all, uh, like the mayor has stated, foot traffic is always there present during the school hours. And uh, a lot of people are walking through there, driving through there from Hego and so forth. I would rather see that being used by, uh, and to help the school with other sports uh, facilities rather than a park, park and ride. From what uh, <clears throat> on my experience that I've seen park and ride is Mostly it is centralized in an area that is accessible to the public within the main roads, not uh, side roads. And this property is basically like a side road from Harmon Loop. And the Harmon Loop is a major uh, throughway heading to Dedidu and heading down to Tamuni. And that is the full reasons why that I, I feel that I do not support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Sinicholas. Is, uh, it states here you are a member of the Dedido Municipal Planning Council. Has the Municipal Planning Council uh, as a group discussed this bill at all? Well, we didn't. I don't think we had time because we just found this out yeah. uh, just a that few he, days. That, we had a meeting the other night, but yeah. uh, we, we okay. didn't have it in the agenda. Second all of right. all, uh, previous years back, they tried to build a middle school in that area and we denied it or mid, middle school or high school in that area adjacent to the um, uh, sports complex. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we now have the mayor of Inalahan, Mr. Mayor Chargala. I... As a board member, of course, I'm supporting. I did not uh, request to speak here, but I am and definitely in support as a GRTA uh, board member. I am uh, speaking on behalf of the body here that we have heard the uh, the concerns and all the issues that is plaguing the uh, the master. I mean, the regional transit authority, and I am 
I'm just simply going to endorse uh, all the efforts put forth by the uh, executive manager and the team of uh, GRTA, as well as our uh, board chair. I'm in support of this uh, bill. Thank our resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe we've covered all the testimony of those who are here to testify. We did uh, the, those who submitted in writing, we have also put up, a, made available to the senators. Uh, we did receive a fiscal note from BBMR and it says per GRTA, the agency has federal funding for the design and construction of this facility. However, GRTA does not possess government of Guam property to construct a park and ride facility. As a result, bill number 131 was introduced. As such, the bill is administrative in nature and poses no fiscal impact upon any funds of the government of Guam. All right, the legal review on this bill is pending. And uh, I guess I will now allow the sponsor to ask any questions. Senator Terlai. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I just want to say that, you know, we've looked all over for this particular project. And I guess uh, the Director of Land Management would testify to that, that, uh, you know, we need the space and the only, the only most appropriate area that we have found out is what, what we're talking about. So, you know, we're pressed with time and if we don't match up the, the, the requirements of the, the feds in as far as getting the piece of property, then we're gonna lose out on this one. We're gonna lose $9 million. But I think that if we go ahead with this project and refine the, uh, the area and to make it uh, you know, appropriate for, for the buses to go in and out, uh, maybe DPW can assist us on that one and maybe mass transit can get uh, uh, more information on just how we can uh, uh, make the route con uh, more convenient for the buses. Because, um, you know, we've checked all over and there's not enough space anywhere that we can find other than this one. And like I said, we're pressed with time. If we don't, if we don't manage to get this property, uh, then I'm not. I don't think we're gonna get that nine million dollars and 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 build the continue with this program. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator. Could you um, clarify, Mr. Borja, if this or Mr. Babauta, whether uh, is there an island? On, on Harmon Loop Road in front of the entrance to this property so that there's no direct access right now from like a left-hand turn? There is a median um, uh, okay. speaker. Thank you, Mayor. All right, and so that's why uh, Mr. Sinek has described the bus as making U-turns. Uh, okay, I right, just wanted to clarify that. And then, um, Mr. Babauta, can you clarify, how far are you along with the design of this project? Is there, yeah, yeah could you just describe that to us? M Madam Speaker, um, thank you. Thank you for, uh, again, this opportunity. Um, Madam Speaker, the, the um, um, impetus behind the creation of a park and ride facility in Deridu um, are as follows. Uh, this was brought up initially, you know, honestly by the mayor deputy. Secondly, uh, in our research within the Guam Regional Transit Authority, we, we've uh, seen um, the heavy traffic flow from Jigu Dedidu. Then there comes uh, the, the military personnel, you know, and uh, it, it's been very, very challenging we've seen with regards to traffic flow. And um, with that and the benefits that uh, this uh, project is going to entail, uh, it, it's huge. So therefore, Madam Speaker and Senators, my team and I got together and put this grant application together. 
And I'll tell you that putting together a competitive grant application with over 250 transit agencies in the United States, who's been doing this for many, many, many years, was very, very challenging because we've never done this before. But I'll tell you, uh, like my, my lead grant writer is saying, we were spending seven days a week, 24 hours a day putting the grant application together. And with the good Lord's help, we were awarded nine and a half million dollars. It's never been done before in the island of Guam. And, and the benefits, and you know, the other thing is, uh, there's a young man from Dededu. His name is Ryan Dahilik. The gentleman is a student at the University of Guam. And really several times he came to me and said, Mr. Bilalto, what are you doing to make things better for, for us, the students, and other writers out of Dededu to, to have a better type of transit system? And, and you know, with, with that in mind and, and all the other good reasons why we need a, a park and ride facility, uh, we, we again, we, we committed ourselves. Um, I mean, I tell you, we, Mr. Babata could have sat down and be like the previous administrators, but you know, we didn't do that because we <laughs> Mr. are passionate Mr. about this. Mr. Babata, thank you. Let me rephrase my question. I yeah. very much support your, um, First of all, I congratulate you on getting the grant. Second of all, I am very much in support of a park and ride facility. You don't have to convince me of the benefits of it. Uh, right. I'm, I'm all on board. My only question today is trying to determine whether we are going to give, you know, the government or the legislature is going to allow that use on this particular piece of property. Yeah. So of course we want to know, you know, what other properties have you considered? Have you done a study to see whether it's really feasible on this property? Because there are some legitimate concerns that have been brought up as to the, you know, the, yeah. the structure or the, the location of this property. And so I just want to know how far along you have, you have got on that. As to this property, only this property, not the project, because I can see the benefits of the project, of course. Yeah. And those, those are tremendous. And those, that's congratulations are really in order. Thank you. For today, Thank you. yeah, you could, for my question, if you could just answer, do you have a design for this particular property? Have you taken into consideration the traffic and, and this location in particular in your design? I can tell you that the number one priority is, is safety. I, I can assure everybody that in putting together a project like this, uh, it, safety is number one. Uh, where we're at with this, Madam Speaker and, and Senators, um, we are in the very, very initial uh, 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 formulation of, of where we're going to with this. Uh, but as far as the design, uh, nothing's been done. And the reason for that is because the Federal Transit Administration will not allow GRTA to spend a single penny of this money unless the property belongs to GRTA. So okay. with respect to your question, uh, very little has been done with regards to the design. But on the other hand, I want to assure the, the people of Guam that um, uh, the mode of uh, mindset, Guam Regional Transit Authority safety is number one. So, you know, when this park and ride facility is put together, I can assure you that there will be a safety analysis conducted and, and all of that to make sure that the in and out uh, uh, transportation will be safe and sound man okay i appreciate that and then can you also speak to um how pressed for time are you ma'am um we uh have four years to get this project going and done four years and uh you know with a track record of governor guam uh i mean uh, this is my first time working for governor guam and it has been very very challenging but with persistence and commitment uh, we're going to get this done in four years uh, unless I'm held back. But uh, I'm committed to this and my board uh, with the leadership of uh, Chairman Sablan and uh, Mayor uh, Chargolev, um, we're determined to get this thing done because it, the, the benefits are huge. And I'm sorry to say that, um, uh, I mean, and we've looked at other properties. Mr. Bora, thank you very much, sir, because you have done a, a lot of good work with us on identifying properties. And, and this is the most logical that we can find for a park and ride facility at this time, uh, Madam Speaker. Okay, Mr. Borja, can I ask you, I know that you assisted EPA in uh, 
um, with finding the lot that they are going to use that was uh, suggested by one of the municipal planning council members of Dedijo. What, um, what other lots did you consider and, and why were they ruled out? If you could just very briefly tell us how many were considered and, and why they were ruled out. Actually, the lot that we, we identified as a possible site, actually, it was DRCA, actually, that, you know, said this is good, this is bad, uh, uh, you know, we can work with this one or not work with this one. You know, our, our inventory of available land for projects such as these are very, very uh, small. And as a matter of fact, uh, look at this one. This one's actually a leftover piece. It wasn't a, uh, you know, it wasn't a big lot. This was just happened to be a leftover piece from the uh, from the severance that they did on there. Uh, but the the location and, uh, and all those other elements as to whether this lot would be good for GRTA, it was basically a GRTA's call. Uh, but we looked at the at one site is up there in Jigo near the uh, game facility near the Jigo gym that we looked up. Uh, we looked at that site. Uh, we looked at, uh, of course, Batulu Road, and we looked over there by uh, Route 3 uh, on the way up to NCS. But uh, uh, by and large, this was the one that the RTA uh, felt it was suited to their project. Has the um, Patulu Road property been designated for EPA uh, formally or not yet? No, uh, that would probably have to go through the uh, to the legislature and a bill similar to this, uh, because that site was the former uh, solid waste transfer station, which was under the jurisdiction of uh, of uh, DPW at one time, and uh, so no, it hasn't been formally officially uh, designated as that. All right. Is this, is, has any other government agency expressed an interest in this particular piece of property subject of this bill? Not, not that I know of. You know, I thought maybe DPW might be interested for their uh, bus satellite station, even though they have a nice square lot on that side. Uh, you know, like I said, I felt that cleaning out the parking uh, would be safer in case of uh, vehicle fire rather than bumps up there in the middle. But uh, not that I know of, uh, no other agency. The other two uh, entities that might be interested in it, of course, would be the school. The school has already severed there. The school has already fenced in their area. Uh, with the acreage that Harmon Loop or J.M. Guerrero has now, they could actually build another school on that site, uh, another school of the same size uh, that they have there. And uh, as a matter of fact, I believe they have a recreational facility there, uh, walking track, I think, uh, uh, on that uh, on that property. So, um, yeah, that, so that's how we looked at it. Okay, and um, I guess finally, so Mr. Bavata, yeah, I'm, I want to support your project. I am concerned uh, that if, you know, we have not heard from the Municipal Planning Council of Dedi Do. Normally that's part of the process here that we, we ask them for their input before we will approve any you know, transfers of land. So I'm just going to put that uh, to you to, that might be something we need, all right? And uh, right now I'm going to uh, open it up to the co-sponsor of the bill, Senator Torres. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I recall, Mr. Borja, that when we had some preliminary meetings with you and um, Guam Regional Transit Authority, there were very little properties available um, for such a project, as I recall. And I also recall that that the in the in the discussion about properties that were available, that it, um, at least two others were ruled out as not being feasible because of the top of uh, topographical challenges and also the access to the main thoroughfare. Um, and and that is why um, this site was not only the most feasible because of its proximity to main trans the, the main thoroughfares, but also uh, the fact that it is in a very densely populated area. And in terms of a, a park and ride, that you know that was one of the reasons that um, 
I know in working with Senator Terlahi and uh, and with uh, Director Babauta, that was one of the um, that was one of the the factors that that narrowed in this particular property. In addition to the fact that this property is such an odd shape property, that its uses are are also you know not not very broad, but it was uh, thought that that it was it was something that could be suitable for a park and ride as the the group was um, you know having its working meetings and deliberating on on what was possible. Um, Mr. Babata, I understand that that there is design money available, right? About two hundred and thirty thousand dollars that has been available since twenty eleven. So, so part of the part of the issue is the the chicken before the uh, the egg before the chicken. Um, in order to even begin a design, you have to have a uh, title to a property, uh, as I understand, right? That's correct. That's correct, ma'am. Right. So as soon as as soon as GRTA is in has um, the property in its in its name titled to GRTA, then that design money is made available um, right away for you to proceed. Right. That's correct, Madam uh, yeah. Senator. You know, I, I appreciate um, Mayor Savaris and Mr. Sinicholas, your your thoughts about how that use that that road is currently used and and the foot traffic and and all of that but i i believe that that was one thing that was seemed to be an attractive part of of putting a, a park and ride um its proximity to foot traffic and people being able to access it conveniently uh and make use of it you know and, and so while while i see your concern for safety i i also I also believe that that is one reason why it would make it more conducive and successful as opposed to a park and ride that is more Harlem Tunnel or somewhere where someone would really have to walk very far to get to the, the buses or drive a distance to get to the buses. So um, I believe with design, that's really that's really the key element here is, is how can you within, uh, um, you know, a, a, densely um, populated area, heavily trafficked, how do you design something so that it is safe and functional? Which is what many cities deal with right now that have park and ride facilities. None of them are set aside or don't have these same challenges. So um, I just want to comment on that because I believe that, that you know many of the concerns here that are brought up as oppositions to this measure were in fact the same concerns that were hashed out that made the 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 not only the authors of this bill but the Guam Regional Transit Authority and and um, land management of the opinion that this was a suitable site, you know. So all those things were factored in. Um, of course, the 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 design is optimal, but but again, you can't even begin with the design until you have the the title, so that's that's sort of the the predicament that um, Mr. Babalta finds himself in. You know, he would love to demonstrate, but he, he can't demonstrate and spend money um, because it's 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 not allowed under the terms of the federal uh, grant. So you know, I just want to point that out. But um, I think certainly this area is would be a, a very a very smart area to encourage people to make use of a brand new concept like park and ride in Guam, just because it is so accessible to shopping areas, to um, shopping areas, businesses, schools, and also, you know, major sports areas. So it, it, um, it has all the elements to make it uh, sensible. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll, I'll reserve any further comments. Thank you, Senator. I'll call Senator Ada. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker. Um, Mr. Babalta or Mr. Sablan, perhaps you can answer my questions um, and I'll leave it up to either one of you. What uh, is the $9.5 million gonna be entire, uh, entirety for the, the park and ride or 
what's the proportion going to go to park and ride and what will be for the buses? Um, Mr. Chairman, I can go ahead and take this question, sir. Um, um, Senator, okay. Adas, thank, you for, thank you for the question. Uh, let me just uh, uh, briefly uh, provide a, a, a real quick overview of the, uh, the um, grant application. Of this $9.5 million, about, um, about $7 million would be for the procurement of, of buses. Uh, we're also going to be procuring eight uh, uh, vehicles, uh, electric cars, uh, at about maybe $200,000. Um, and the essence, and, and in addition to that, we're also going to be, be purchasing a, a technology transportation management system and the construction of a, a charging station. The construction of a charging station would be about $400,000 thereabouts. And we have uh, funding reserved for uh, the state administration. I don't have the entirety of the grant proposal right now, but that's a quick uh, kind of like one down of the, the, the breakdown of the cost. But, you know, with, with, the, with the TMS, the transportation management system and the electric cars, what it is is that this will be a concept where like Uber, if any of you have uh, rode an Uber or use Uber to, to, to uh, get your transportation, you download the app, you schedule your ride and uh, a car will go out and pick you up. Well, this is going to be part of that where riders can download their app, schedule their rides, and then they can either drive over to the park and ride, or they can ask for a car to go out and pick them up at their residence. And from their residence, they get, they get picked up and they get dropped off at the park and ride. So they don't have to uh, drive their car over to the park and ride. And, and from there, they can get on the bus and go to University of Guam. So, so that, that is, uh, in terms of safety, that would be a, a plus in terms of addressing the safety uh, uh, concerns of uh, the mayor and Mr. San Nicolas, is that, um, is that people will be afforded an opportunity to uh, to use the electric cars to get them pick, get themselves picked up to go to the park and ride. Uh, so, so Senator Ada, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so again, we have money set aside to procure buses, to buy cars, to build charging stations, to procure the um, the uh, transportation management system. And all of that will be under the umbrella of the $9.5 million. And like I said before, you know, not a single penny uh, can, can, can be spent until we have a piece of property. Okay, thank you. So the so we're looking about perhaps maybe $1.8 million to construct the park and ride facility then, right? Now it's just getting a little bit of an estimate yes, here because yes, you're looking at 7 million on buses. Uh, would this plan, and you know, the concern was brought up about the the median that's there in the middle of the road. Are you also looking at proposing putting a traffic light at that intersection where the entrance to the the uh, park and ride will be located? Sure, I'm, I'm quite sure that you know, in working with the Guam Highway uh, with DPW, that will be a, a, a very important factor in making sure that you know the uh, the um, the park and ride facility is safe for the buses to to leave and come back, at, you know. But on the other hand, there are two uh, two accesses that are uh, possible from the rear and also from the front. So I'm quite sure that you're working with uh, the Guam Highway folks at uh, DPW that um, there may be a need to put a traffic light there. We, we there may be a need to uh, to make some uh, modifications to the median in the in the middle, you know. So. I, I have to work with the safety folks to address that concern. Okay, so will there be any leeway to perhaps maybe um, go from seven million dollars on buses to six million dollars to increase the the cost for the park and ride facility and the the traffic light? Should a traffic light be built there, or you know, just to address the the issues of the concerns of the residents in the area? Yes, being that I don't think they would want buses tra traversing on the on the back side of the property, knowing that I think that's a, a residential, there's a lot of residential homes in that area. Sure, uh, definitely. Uh, we have an opportunity to uh, communicate with um, the Federal Transit Administration and we can uh, uh, provide uh, uh, requests to modify the grant proposal uh, to include, uh, you know, uh, addressing the, 
the uh, uh, concerns with regard to safety, traffic light, or or anything else, you know. But but yes, there's a, 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 a possibility that we can you know communicate with the uh, Federal Transit Administration to make amendments and maybe reduce the amount for uh, you know with the cost of buses or whatever, and uh, we can you know work that out. I'm quite sure that we can work that out with the FTA. Oh, okay, that's great to know. So that you know. Like I said, the concerns of the residents in the area and uh, the traffic in the front area. All right, you know, Madam the, Speaker, that's the only the question I have. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ada. Senator Talataitikui, you are recognized. So just mostly, Madam Speaker, good afternoon to everyone who's here. Um, so Lindsay, first I want to say, you know, thank you for sticking, uh, sticking around at GRTA. I know you wanted to retire, but uh, you're doing such a great job there. And I, I know that the governor didn't want to let you go. So um, I want to thank you for continuing to serve the people of Guam in this capacity because uh, GRT has is, is been neglected. Uh, must admit they have been neglected for a while. So I appreciate all you're doing. You know, my only concern, Celestine, really is, is just the, uh, you know, the collaboration with uh, the Municipal Council of Dedido. Um, even before this uh, grant was going in or while it was being processed, the uh, waiting time, um, it would have been a great opportunity uh, once that uh, you and Mr. Borja had, had finally finalized it to, to meet the Municipal Council. And I think Senator Adder had some great ideas to probably um, address some of their concerns um, by this traffic light and, and readjusting the grant. Um, so I think it could be a win-win situation, uh, but a, that would only happen if, if you were to meet with the Municipal Council uh, personally yourself. And because like what you're doing to us today, you know, uh, safety is the greatest concern that you have. And I think that uh, the Municipal cal uh, Council as well as the people of Dedito want to see that uh, you're taking that into full consideration with regards to safety. Um, I, I just have a couple questions with regards, most of it was asked uh, my questions, but so I've seen with regards to the, um, when you said four years, uh, is that four years to start the project that you have with this grant to start it within four years or the completion to be done in four years? The, uh, the original um, plan, uh, Senator um, uh, Taitagui is to, um, to complete the project in four years. But on the other hand, you know, um, in, in communicating with the Federal Transit Administration uh, because of perhaps maybe some, some obstacles along the way, you know, good reasons. Uh, they, they, they're always willing to help us in that regard, you know, but, but our goal is to, to try and get this um, project going and uh, completed because, you know, I think it's sorely needed by the people of Guam, especially up at the Jigu and the Dedidu area. And then you had the military folks, you know, but, but going back to your question real quickly about uh, communicating with the Municipal Planning Council, I want you to know, and, and Madam Speaker and the Senators, that I, sp I spent some time talking to the Mayor Dedido. And you know, honestly, I was promised that we will have, GRTA will have the old, the former free market. But somehow as, as things begin to materialize and I've got monies available in the beginning, to address that need that the mayor brought up to me, later on they changed their minds. So that's how we arrived. We're going to uh, Joe Bora, who's been very helpful, to begin looking for other pieces of property. Because when we put this application together, we stated that we already have a piece of property. And that's bearing in mind what the mayor had committed to me. So after she negated from that, then I went to Joe and Joe and I and Senator Terlahi and Senator Torres. Then we started working with you and we arrived at this property. So yes, ma'am, I've communicated with the Dedidu mayor and uh, I asked to meet with the council, but they refused to allow me to meet with them. Oh. So, wow. Well, I'm, 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 this. I'm passionate I, about this project. Right, I, I understand Celestine and- um, I'm and that's one of the reasons why I've, on. that's one of the reasons why I submitted my resignation three times already. Yeah. You know, Celestine, um, that's, you mentioned the old flea market. 
Correct, um, everybody knows where that is. I mean, you actually had an opportunity to use that area, which is, is I think is large enough and people can park their cars. There's a lot of room there. Um, what was the reasoning for them not using, uh, or, or Mayor Savaris, can you answer that question, please? Um, if the opportunity to use the old flea market was available, I mean, it's obvious <laughs> they have, that's probably less money to be using for, you know, laying down the uh, asphalt or cement in the parking area. It's already completed. Uh, what was the, the uh, pushback on that? Okay, let me and let me explain. Yes, we we identified, but you know, of course, the Municipal Planning Council, we were we also that's a revenue generating facility area for us as well. Uh, ever since we when we had the flea market there, we generate revenue, it is part of the buffer strip that allows us to generate revenue. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Senator Tidak, we, we even have a, uh, there's a, a portion of it that's going to be leased for the tribe vision. So one of the things is, yes, we were willing to do, because we need funding to also repair our roads. As you know, there's no local funding to repair secondary and traditionary roads. And so what we wanted to do was come into partnership, but we didn't realize that they had to own the property. And so when it came time to, uh, when, when Mr. Babata had brought up that they needed to have ownership of the property, that's when it was uh, brought up that, you know, we don't want to give up the property. We, we were looking for ways to generate, we still generate funding through there, uh, through portions of the lease. Like I said, TriVision is in the process of leasing a portion of it to put their, their media uh, uh, billboard up there. Um, and so, you know, the law, the public, I mean, the ownership of the Municipal Planning Council is for revenue generating. So that's why in the past, you know, when we talked to, when we had relocated the flea market to the farmers co-op and we have that partnership there, we still look for revenue generating opportunities for us, especially to make repairs uh, within the village. And so we were going to, we were looking at the party and it was always brought up. This would be a perfect place because it was already, we have an area to go in and out. But when they said that they had to own the property and have the property under the, the mass transit, that's when, you know, it, there was a little bit of, um, uh, you know, the, the council actually reframed it. They said, that we can't give, we don't want to give up the, we can't give up the property because it's generating, it generates revenue for us. So, and yes, I, you know, I spoke, I, even prior to Mr. Babat, I had talked to uh, Mr. August, um, um, the previous general manager for about a park and ride. And so, you know, I thank Mr. Babata, like I said, they were aggressively seeking grants. And so of course it's not that we didn't want them to be a part of that, but you know, we didn't want our council actually, I don't make the final decision. Remember everything, we vote on things at the, at the municipal planning council le uh, level. And it was my uh, council that said, we can't give up this property because we also want to, we need to generate revenue to make repairs on our secondary roads and traditionary roads. A lot of our 50 year old roads are, have potholes and, and there's no local funding to assist us in making those repairs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Savares. Um, we can probably talk about roads at another time, but I mean, I've been advocating for funding for roads and we have in our budget bill provided uh, funding for roads for the villages and uh, for secondary roads. So for, to say that there's no money, I, 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 I can't swallow that. <laughs> Number the money two, goes to DPW, ma'am. And of which, course, across right. the board, they equally divide it three roads per village. Right. So there is some funding going there, but granted, you're right, there's not enough uh, funding for those roads. And I appreciate you, you, you know, trying to find a way to make that happen for your village of Dedido. However, um, this also is very ben beneficial to the people and, and also the surrounding villages in your area uh, by utilizing um, the flea market, uh, the old flea market area. This, this is help for the people of Guam. Um, I'm not sure about TriVision, how your intentions to use something like that, uh, that's, that's news. But the one that's disturbing is the fact that you won't allow the, or not you, but the Municipal Council needs to meet with Mr. Babauta. And for them not to wanting to meet with him, there's no collaboration. And I believe that 
there should be some. Uh, I, I hope you can arrange that. Melissa, I know you're, you're very yes. good at getting people together. So I hope this can be done very soon that uh, Celestine can, can speak to them and talked about the, the area that's proposed in this legislation. And maybe there can be a, like I said, a win-win. Um, the other question I have with regards to, um, is there anything, uh, Celestine, uh, Mr. Bavalta, anything in the grant that requires a certain amount of square footage that uh, for this funding, or that's totally up to you? No, ma'am, there is no requirement uh, with regards to um, a specific um, uh, acreage Where? of space uh, in that regard. Yeah. Okay, and the, the last thing I think uh, we already, somebody already spoke about it, but I think it's just as important is the study, uh, the impact study of the surrounding areas in which a um, park and ride facility is placed on. There should be some type of impact study. Has that been done yet, um, Mr. Babata? Um, no, ma'am, not yet. But uh, again, in, in looking at uh, the space, in looking at, uh, you know, the, the technology that we're going to be using, plus um, the electric cars, we know that perhaps maybe there's a need for um, uh, a larger number of parking spaces, but with the technology and the electric cars where people will be able to download the app or call GRTA Transit Management Center, and schedule their rides to be picked up at their homes, you know, and can drop, get dropped off, uh, then we can begin to look at reducing the uh, volume of cars being parked over at uh, the park and ride facility. So, um, and, and if there's a need for us to increase the number of cars to be transporting people back and forth to their residence, to the park and ride facility, in our future grant applications with the Federal, uh, Federal Transit Administration, we can include that in our grant proposals. Okay. Yeah. Because we I have every year we have uh, right now every year we have one point nine million dollars in in uh, recurring formula grants from the Federal Transit Administration. Uh, within that grant, we can uh, sit down and, and, and put together proposals that will effectively uh, allow us to make our transit system much better. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rabalta, and I think a, a a study would be important here, an impact study. Um, and a lot of questions will be answered and as well as, uh, you know, what is data or just the study alone can tell us a lot more. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time and uh, your service too. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Taitikwi. Senator Brown, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I certainly appreciate all the information that's been provided. Um, you know, if this lot is workable for mass transit, I think that's wonderful. But but as uh, some of our other colleagues have mentioned, I think they're going to need to address how they can minimize impact to the neighboring residential community, because certainly you have a school at one end. And of course, you have the um, DPW bus station at the other end and then the residents in the back. Um, I, I don't think we can argue that there isn't a need for such a facility. And certainly uh, while we take for granted, we get in our cars every day. There are many people in our community that don't have vehicles or are not able to drive or maybe for health reasons prefer not to drive for their own safety. Uh, so, so I think we can all say there's definitely a need for the facility, but I think it's how can we, how can, how can we have mass transit address uh, where there's accessibility to and from and it doesn't add any additional heavy burden uh, on the residential community or the excess road that currently exists uh, between the school and between the DPW facility. If those concerns can be addressed, I think we understand certainly Mr. Borja elaborated about, you know, there's only so much government land inventory uh, and also the location that's, lo you know, located to an accessible area for, for the roadway uh, that's going through there. So I, I understand all that. I appreciate it. I certainly hope they're able to move forward with the project, but definitely I think in the planning process, uh, they're going to need to address how are they going to minimize adverse impact to the um, the uh, residential community that's uh, located behind this particular property. Other than that, Madam Speaker, I have no questions. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Yeah. 
There may be some technical difficulties and speaker will be logging back in if we can just hang on for one minute. Thank you for your patience. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Senator Brown. I think I'm frozen again. They're not. Can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you, Madam Speaker. Oh, no. Off a day, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes sir. Sir. we can hear you. Senator Pito, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Madam Speaker. I can hear you. Oh, there you are. Madam Speaker. Okay, sorry. Madam yeah, my, my, my internet for some reason is going on and off. But uh, I have a couple more questions if I could ask. Um, Mayor Savaris, what other property uh, does is within the mayor of and was this, is within the jurisdiction of the mayor of Dedido right now? Besides the Dedido Free Market or the old Free Market. Um, currently we have, uh, the, the, um, the old fire and police station, which is the Dedido Municipal Building. Main entrance. Yeah, the main entrance into a glacier circle. And so what we were looking at is also, I wanted to find out from Mr. Borja, if he ever, um, that buffer strip in front of ERC, K's Enterprise, that area, if they ever research, because public parks and recreation actually has a hard time maintaining that facility. And so you would have a, uh, it can have an entrance coming into Loretta Street, into Buena Vista, and then out through Iglesia Circle without any problems. It's already a flat area. All they need to do is pave it and have your entrance and exits in that area, especially if we're targeting the people from Jigo uh, and Anderson, because they come in from the north and exit through the south. Okay. So we'll put that on, um, well, for the director of land management and the, and the mass transit manager to consider. But um, could I ask you, Mayor, what is your income from the old flea market right now? Well, pre-COVID, um, Senator was uh, six, a little over $6,000 a month. Uh, but now with post-COVID, we're not quite making fifteen, two thousand, 2000 depending on how many vendors, because our vendors were still limited uh, based on the executive order on how, what type of vendors we can have. So on a monthly basis, we're not quite hitting $2,000. we are roughly on a given month, maybe fifteen to 1600 a month. And then now we have Food Truck Tuesdays. Um, that gives us an additional uh, three, $400 a month as well. So based on, on the projected, the income that we're currently getting post-COVID, um, we're getting about 2000 a month. All right. And which then goes how back out to the community. Okay. What, uh, how much are you expecting from TriStar? TriStar, we're still working out with uh, land management and their um, the lease because the lease agreement is managed by Department of Land Management, and so we're looking at because it's a twenty by twenty space, roughly about maybe six, a little over six, five thousand a year. It's a very small space. Did you say five thousand per year? Uh, roughly, uh, approximately. Okay. And so, um, Mr. Borja, yeah, Director, can you tell me, is for the mass transit uh, project on the lot in the bill, 
will any rezoning be required or will it be exempt from anything like that? You know, I, uh, I don't really know what the zoning on that is other than it is a uh, government land and it is a school. And uh, zoning a school, uh, a land for schools is a relatively uh, a new thing. I, I wanted to put up a, uh, uh, there might be a, a rezoning issue on it, but there is a, uh, uh, you know, what uh, Mayor Savaris was bringing up. The biggest uh, revenue leak that the, the Derrido has is, uh, you know, she's talking about the vendors that uh, rent space for the old free market. But by law, that property was given to Derrido, uh, the buffer strip on that side of the street. And each of those uh, private businesses were allowed to lease the portion in front of them, either for parking or for beautification. And throughout the years, uh, money has been received by the government uh, for, from those businesses, from some of them. Uh, but that, uh, I don't believe that has ever gotten to the mayor. And the split is supposed to be two thirds goes to Derrido and one third goes to uh, Zigo. And uh, I don't believe the uh, mayor, uh, that she's never told me she's received any money on it. Pre-COVID, we looked at the entire area and we were working with the mayor uh, to collect some of the back rent that some of those uh, companies had. And I believe one company uh, did bring the, their account current, but I don't believe the mayor received that, uh, received that uh, money in hand. Uh, more importantly, is there are some big corporations that are actually using that that are not paying, uh, you know, for that. So throughout the years, although the mayor and the planning council of De uh, Derrido, and this is probably why they don't want to give up ownership on that piece, uh, because it does have the potential of generating revenue, but uh, I don't know if uh, Gigo and Derrido have ever seen the uh, fruits of that, uh, of that public law for them. All right, thank you. We'll follow up on that. And can I ask if um, if no zoning is rezoning is required, and you know that type of process? Is there any way that any of you sees that the landowners in the area are going to be notified in this process? So uh, let's say if this bill goes forward, I think that would, you know it gives them an opportunity, but not a real direct notice of it. Um, and then it would. I don't know, Mr. Rabalta, do you foresee that? Like getting their, their type, any other type of uh, public input that is necessary for the grant or not, not, not really? Mr. Rabalta? Or, or Mr. Borja, do, did I either of you see any other opportunity for public input after, after this bill is approved? Mm, not, not that I know, it. but but in general in that area, and I asked to put up a uh, picture of the area because there are other developments in that area also concerning uh, access. And uh, at the end of that road, not 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 the road we're talking about, uh, but at the end of that pipeline road is St. Paul's, and also in that area is where I learn is planning on building. And they did have a problem in the original bill uh, introduced, I believe, by uh, Senator San Augustine, I think, in the previous legislature. They had a problem with uh, access, and that's why that, uh, that bill uh, died in that uh, previous legislature. I think it was the 34th or maybe even the 33rd legislature that uh, it died in there. Um, I learned has perfected their application uh, for access in that area. Uh, getting access, I believe, from the military, uh, and also getting access from, uh, I believe, buying a private property in that area, as well as a, a resolution from the Municipal Planning Council uh, supporting that island uh, project, you know, for that area. So that's, uh, you know, and I, like I said, if I could put up the picture, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot happening around that area, and I don't mean uh, density and like that, and there are some uh, private land owners in that, so. Yes, please uh, put your picture up and talk us through that. Okay. So here we go. So so this weird shaped lot here with that bend, uh, this area over here, you can see the curse area. This is the sports complex. And then this is the JM Guerrero. 
and this is the uh, the road that we're talking about, the lot that we're talking about. Now you can see that it, it connects to our other access roads, one here, and then this goes to that residential area. I believe it's uh, Hegel Lupa, if I'm not mistaken, the mayor, uh, on that. But this line that you see here, this white line that crosses Route 16 down here, this line that goes all the way up there, you know what that is? That's the pipeline. That's the military pipeline. That one goes there. And then to the right of the military pipeline, where you see these brown rectangles, these are Chamorroland Trust uh, agricultural leases. These are, uh, these are, this is a big Chamorroland Trust property. As this was, the uh, sports complex originally was a Chamorroland Trust property, but this is a Chamorroland Trust uh, agricultural area. All the other uh, houses and things that you see there are private, uh, private areas. The area that we call commonly call uh, Old Flea Market, or we call it a land mansion, the buffer strip. There's actually two buffer strips. This gray area that you see up here, that's the actual uh, Old Flea Market or and part of the buffer strip. This is actually only one quarter of the buffer strip. The buffer strip extends from here from here all the way up to the uh, last service station, I believe it's a mobile service station, uh, on your right hand side, right before you get to uh, to uh, home center, uh, the uh, Dededo Home Depot. But, uh, so, so this area over here, all of these, on this side of the street, uh, these uh, companies, uh, private companies are using that buffer strip either for beautification, or for parking for the facility in that area. And they're supposed to be paying rent to the uh, Dededo Mayor's Council, two thirds and one third to, uh, to Jigo. On the other side of the street where the state park is, that's the, uh, that's the other side of the street there that the mayor was, uh, was uh, talking about. And then of course, further up here is where you have the, uh, the new free market and the new co-op. And, and this is the, uh, uh, so you have this road here and you have some green area here, but this is, this is private property. Now, when they realign Harmon Loop Road, when they, when they realigned it, uh, making the straight road wide and everything, there was a bunch of slivers left alongside of here, notably in front of Stang Brothers, T-S-A-N-G. And that property is government property, but it's being used for parking by the, uh, by the private company. Properties like that and slivers like that, my personal recommendation is send it to the adjoining landowner. Because that's really the only landowner that, that can use it or lease it, you know, uh, on that. But uh, it, it's being underutilized now by the government and it's being overutilized by private parties on that. There's also another situation over here by... Uh, Cost you less parking lot. It has a weird triangle. If you ever pass by there and you see the cost you less parking lot. And the reason for that is next to it is private property. So there is a subdivision back here, about 200 homes that is serviced by that road, which is a really an illegal easement. It passes through private property. So when they realign, when they realign Harmon Loop, uh, it created some, uh, you know, situations, uh, uh, I think that needs to be addressed because uh, if, uh, if that landowner was really uh, hard ass about it, uh, uh, hard about it, uh, he could potentially close that road, you know, and throw things into uh, disarray. And then, of course, the other part here is that uh, a private company is using government land as uh, a parking for their employees, uh, you know, or whatever. And uh, you know, the government should get, better do should get some benefit out of there as the host community for that. So there are uh, situations here that need addressing, and it can only be done really uh, by legislation. Um, land management cannot do it, uh, you know, with uh, the legislature that has the uh, authority and prerogative to be able to do that if, if they so want. So this is the road, this road here is actually the pipeline. This is what you call the pipeline road. It extends all the way to up to Tijan, across to Totu, up to Sinahanya, up to Agani Heights, and all the way up to PD to the uh, depot. And this, of course, goes all the way up to uh, Anderson Air Force Base and to the new base on it. But uh, 
So this space in here really at, at one time was a government property. Mr. Borja, are you saying that the pipeline road presents a, a challenge for GRTA to have true in and out access from that back entrance? No, because they can go to uh, they can go through these other uh, the roads. Of course, it goes through uh, like I said, residential area, but they're not locked in on that backside. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone have questions on this uh, picture before I ask one final question? Sure but anyone on the picture? Yeah. Madam Chair, I just wanted to ask a question. It's not necessarily related, but since Mr. Borja was going over that, out of curiosity, what is that privately owned, that big lot there on the left behind the Koshu Les there that is uh, vacant? Just out of That's curiosity, no because first of all, I've, I've really looked at an aerial view of this area. Uh, yes, that is private property. Part. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that's like one of the few open areas there probably for future development. And, and one other point, I, I assume that the, uh, I mean, isn't the, the location there where the field is still Chamorland Trust property? Aren't they supposed to be paying a lease to Chamorland Trust? Uh, which one? The sports field? The har yeah, the sports field. No, I believe that was given to the jurisdiction of the uh, Guam Football Association. Really? When was that? Because when I was reviewing no. the land trust leases, what, no. 10, 11 oh. years ago, they were all under the uh, Chamorro Land Trust and they had to pay, you know, they had a nominal amount, but they were having to pay, uh, you know, an annual fee to the Chamorro Land Trust for that. Some oh. of this is still under the jurisdiction of the Department of Parks and Rec. Uh, well, I just recall records of it under Chamorro Land Trust, so interesting, but, uh, oh, well, I guess we can look at that another day. All right, Mr. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any other questions on the map? Yeah. Who's that? Senator Torres? Oh, I'm sorry. I, that was me. Oh, Senator Torres. Uh, okay, please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Joe, um, I remember this pipeline when I was in my younger years uh, because I have an aunt who used to live on the pipeline in Harmon uh, that you're looking at. And I, and, during, I haven't been there in, gosh, since 19 forgotten, but if I'm not mistaken, the pipeline is like the divider. You can't even cross, you know, cars coming one way. Um, if you're going the other way, you know, you're on the other side of the pipe. So I'm looking at the area in which the proposed um, uh, park and ride area right here. Okay, further down, um, if you go all the way down, no, not that way. Yeah, right to the pipeline. There's access right there and there's not, doesn't look like that many houses. Maybe this is an old um, Google Earth map, but they can still go through the pipeline and exit out where St. Paul's is at, right? I think maybe Mr. St. Nicholas can answer that better. I believe this was actually uh, returned federal access lands and uh, I believe split up uh, among the uh, St. Nicholas family, I believe. Joe, that, that pipeline is federal property, it's 50 feet wide. Yes, and the, gover the federal government can always close it anytime. Yes, it is. And the pipelines are buried. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's open road. Then there is, uh, so right now, anybody using that road, that, that long pipeline road, uh, they're accessing federal property. Is that correct? That's yes. correct. Okay, so, but it's not blocked. In other words, people can still use it. They still use it on a daily basis to get away from traffic, Senator. Okay, so, um, I mean, because if you, if you look at that, um, it might be an option keeping it from, you know, the other highly populated areas. Um, okay, thank you. Just looking at that, wondering about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I have one further question uh, for Dom. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is for Mr. Mavalta. Does your grant allow you to lease property instead of outright owning it? Is it possible that you lease it for a long term and then build this facility on it? No, ma'am. And the reason for that is because um, they have, the Federal Transit Administration had experienced in the past that um, where they've given up monies to build facilities, you know, and then later on, uh, a new administration shows up, and there it is. They decide to go and um, uh, use uh, that building that was built with FDA funds for other purposes. And a good example of that is the, uh, the one down at the Gang at the Gang Mayor's office. 
that used to be a mass transit facility, and then it was taken away from uh, from mass transit. So um, they're they're very very uh, strict in regards to make, uh, using federal uh, transit administration funds uh, to build facilities. Okay. They want the agency. <laughs> Property. If you could send me what um, the page of the grant or whatever the rules are, that rule that talks about the, you know, your type of ownership of the property. So we could oh, put I'm that I'm also in the committee report. I would, would appreciate it. Okay. All right. So um, um, I guess all the senators have asked questions. I'm going to go back to Senator Pito Terlahi, the sponsor of the bill to close. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much, but uh, I've listened to uh, all the concerns, so uh, we'll talk about it later on, and uh, let, I'll get together with uh, uh, the manager of uh, Mass Transit and also Mr. Wara and continue to search for another location uh, just in case. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to our mayor, Municipal Planning Council, yes, Senator Torres. Yeah, I just, I just want to comment that in in look in considering all the the um points that were raised today one thing about this bill that i think is advantageous to everybody's concerns is that it has a reversionary clause in it in other words you know mr babato was very um clear about about his challenge of availing of these funds um, and pushing it, the completion of this project to the timeline, which is four years, you know, to, to construct using those grant monies. Um, and so if, if you think about, you know, the best case scenario, right, if you were to allow someone to avail of $9 million in grant money and to go full throttle and, and try to, to construct everything, design and construct within the four year period, you know, the, the, I mean, that, that is great incentive, right. And what we're doing with him, the, 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 uh, the advantageous part to the government is that there's no risk of permanently losing this property to GRTA because of the reversionary. In other words, if, the, if, if, if for some reason they are not able to complete the project, then it, it, the land goes back to the government. So in that regard, I think that, you know, it, it's a very conservative, um, way to try to accommodate a project and um, and the use of monies, like uh, our chairman said, you know, $9 million is nothing that we want to scoff at if we have the ability to make it go. So I just wanted to point out that the, the safety valve with the reversionary is there, unlike many leases that are 99 years, and you really have no control over it, whereas this one, it's giving Mr. Babalta the ability to do something, but a very, very strict timeline. And then if he, if, if for some reason it doesn't go through no harm, the land comes back to the government uh, in full title. So I just want to point that out, you know, as we contemplate this, um, because I believe everybody tried to exhaust uh, localities and this was the most reasonable. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. All right, anyone else? If not, all right. Um, There being no additional individuals to present testimony, the, the committee will consider Bill 131-LS duly heard. And I wanna thank all of you for being here and, and helping us in this process, uh, all of you who've participated. The public hearing is now adjourned. The time is 3.41 p.m. Thank you.